I've waited a long time for this. The time has finally come to talk about My Little Pony. To many on the internet, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a series that needs no introduction. It was the fourth generation of its franchise and had a TV show that took the world by storm. In the early 2010s, the show absolutely dominated the internet. Even today, it has one of the most impressive followings of anything I've ever seen. You could dedicate a whole month to looking at nothing but Friendship is Magic content and you'd still only scratch the surface. The show actually managed to gain a wide following among adults. The term brony was coined to describe grown men who watched the show. I'm sure the creators never expected this, but from watching the series, it's easy to see the appeal. The best way I can describe it is that the show feels kind of like a friend. There's something so welcoming and positive about the environment and the characters that really draws you in. The writing is also taken seriously and doesn't feel like it talks down to its younger audience. It speaks to a large group of people rather than a small section of them. How do I know this? Well, because my younger self just so happened to be part of this following. Like I said, it was hard to be on the internet and not get caught up in the craze. I remember my friends gave me a hard time for liking the show, but then I convinced them to watch it and they became massive fans of it. I used to obsessively indulge in fan content and may or may not have written my own fan fictions for it. With luck, they're gone from the internet and will never ever ever be recovered. And to answer the question as to who my favorite was, easily Rainbow Dash. I always thought she was just the coolest character ever. Even today, it makes me really happy to see her and stuff. But aside from watching Fim Flam Philosophy's Rainbow Dash Presents videos, oh, the channel's called Dawn Somewhere Now, there were many ways to engage with My Little Pony on the internet. Like with any cartoon at the time, one way was through Flash games. Some were official and others were fan-made. So let's take a look at some of them. Let's start with a big one, Guardians of Harmony. In this, your horse is running across a field of obstacles while the screen scrolls behind you. We have a map with four locations and a selection of characters we can choose from. So let's choose- Aw, come on. Keeping me away from Rainbow Dash should be a crime. <laughs> at the start, you can only choose between Spitfire and Shining Armor. You can unlock Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Twilight by completing each stage. I guess Applejack, Rarity, and Fluttershy are taking the day off. Every pony has different stats, so while I initially chose Spitfire because I like Pegasi, it kinda sucked that she had significantly less lives than Shining Armor. So in the stage, you jump on platforms, collect gems, and avoid changelings. You can either jump on them Mario style or dash into them to kill them. <laughs> Ah, I think they gave Shining Armor the wrong voice there. You can also collect gems to fill a meter that allows you to summon Big Dragon Spike. He'll then carry you through a portion of the stage, collecting all power-ups and killing all enemies in his path. He's extremely handy. Also, watch out for the cockatrice that turns you into stone. Some of the obstacles can also get really complicated to work around. If you don't jump on a platform in time, you crash into it and take damage. Sometimes it feels like you have to take a hit from something when you have things coming at you from all sides. Also, sometimes when you miss a jump, you'll miss way more gems than you expected to. It's so cruel to see all the platforms you could have jumped on. But the first few stages are pretty easy. Once you clear Ponyville, you get Pinkie Pie and head to the Ghastly Gorge. Again, it's pretty easy. But things get a lot harder when you unlock Rainbow Dash and enter the Everfree Forest. As much as I love playing as her, she doesn't have that many lives, so she can't take hits to save her life. You're killing me here, Rainbow. And neither does Twilight, who you unlock when you reach the castle. As can be expected, this is the most challenging stage. <laughs> hey, Spike just threw Twilight into an instant death. I guess he got fed up with her. Just decided to kill her. But once you win, you save Equestria and you unlock Endless Mode, just in case you want to try and play one of these stages for the rest of time. You also get badges for accomplishing certain tasks during gameplay. This is really fun and just challenging enough to the point where it never gets too frustrating. It's worth giving a go. Now let's move on to Restore the Elements of Magic. This one follows a story and has a different minigame for each of the main ponies, except for Twilight. 
In Twilight's chapter, you just see a cutscene of the elements of harmony breaking. Now you go through each chapter and try to recover the pieces for each of the ponies. In Applejack's, you click trees for her to kick, knocking apples down. You then click on a space to have Twilight fly over to it. When a tree is kicked, a fragment of honesty will appear. You can also collect emblems for bonus pictures, but make sure you collect them all before you grab the final fragment. You also have to make sure you aren't floating where the fragment will appear. Otherwise, you'll collect it automatically. Once you beat a stage, you can play it again with a timer. All of them will follow more or less the same format. In Fluttershy's, you fly around her house and click on squirrels for her to help. Yeah, it's too much fun to just slam Twilight into everything. Rarity's stage is kind of unique, because you have to click guards for her to cover with hats so you can fly past them. Other than that, there isn't much to it. Now Rainbow Dashes is where it gets complicated. You have to fly through passages and towers and summon her to kick storm clouds away for you. This map is actually kind of big and requires a good bit of traveling. And you'd better be careful around some of these platforms. The reason is because, well... Uh, Rainbow Dash? Help? Well, looks like we gotta restart. Now let's try to- what? Wait, what? What? She's gone. Where'd she go? I guess it's possible to die in this stage. Rest in peace, Twilight. Well, let's try again, and... Uh, this day was going to be perfect. The struggles of being an alicorn. Horn just gets caught on everything. The glitches could be because the game is old, but still something to look out for if you play this today. In Pinky's stage, you move through the Canterlot Sculpture Garden and Hedge Maze. You fly above hedges and have her desecrate statues. Look at her go. Imagine all the collateral damage she's caused with her party-loving optimism. Oh, hey, Discord. Then once you win, you get a pretty picture. Hooray! This one's good, just very basic with its concept. It's an effective children's game. Now here's one of my favorites. Racing is magic. There's a race going on in Ponyville, and you must assemble a team to win it. From the main cast, you choose an Earth Pony, a Pegasus, and a Unicorn. They each have their own course you have to beat with them. You run through obstacles and collect apples to stay at top speed. You start as your Earth Pony and either jump over obstacles or slide beneath them. You go through hoops to speed up and use power-ups that will either give you a boost or freeze water so you can walk across it. You can also do a really big jump, but you can't control your movement when you do. Then before the next stage, you have a Pit Stop Challenge. This one requires you to match ponies with their cutie marks, though it does have a habit of making you wait for a matching pair to show up. Just make sure you're surveying the entire screen the whole time. Now let's move on to the sky. Instead of a big jump, you can dive bomb as you fly through hoops and avoid parasprites. Your new power-up will also allow you to send them away. I like dive bombing, even though it isn't always necessary. Then for this pit stop game, we have to lasso matching groups of ponies. As long as the lines perfectly connect, you should be able to complete this fairly easily. Then for the final stage, you're in the Everfree Forest with a similar format as the first stage. You lift bushes and build bridges. Then once you win, you get a ranking based on your performance, and yeah. This is really addicting and fun to play through. I like the idea of each stage being designated for the type of pony that runs it. Being able to build your own team is a good feature too. Give this one a try. Now we have Power Ponies Go, based on the episode Power Ponies. What, so is this like the Teen Titans Go version of Power Ponies? Like in the episode, the ponies are transported into the comic city of Mare Tropolis. Pinky and Fluttershy are kidnapped by the Maniac and are being held captive in the Shampoo Factory. Now we get stages where we play as each of the other ponies and move through Mayortropolis. You collect comic pages while avoiding enemies that you can attack with either a regular move or a special attack. They both stun, but the special attack can hit enemies that are farther away. You move through a maze and grab the pages, trying not to die. The first few levels are easy, but they get harder when you have to search through different areas. You're being timed, but it's kind of hard to run out the timer if you aren't just messing around. I also love how all the ponies have attacks relating to their personas. That's a nice detail I'm glad they took the time to consider. The music is also awesome. In the last stage, you rescue Fluttershy and Pinky, then you play a spike and take on the Maniac. You collect mirror shards and you can summon Fluttershy and Pinky to come in and fight for you. 
Once you find all the pieces, you defeat Maniac and save the day. In addition, you can collect comic covers in every stage that give you new abilities if you play again. You can click the screen to become invincible, stun all enemies, use a special attack endlessly for a short time, or earn extra points from collectibles. You also have different outfits. So this adds a bit of replay value to an already really fun game. This is another one of my favorites, and one you can spend a good deal of time playing. We've had nothing but really good ones so far, so let's keep it going. This one is called Key Crusaders. Or maybe it's the Kitty Mark Crusaders. This one's a little confusing to understand. You have to help the ponies escape these fields by moving boxes into matching rows of three so they disappear. Then you have to click the exit so the pony will walk to it. As you can see, I wasn't sure what to do at first. Sometimes you need to destroy otherwise unbreakable boxes by damaging them with nearby matches. Other times, you click the pony and have her move to collect bonuses. It's one of those games that's hard to describe, but you just kind of know what to do when you're playing it. You can give this a try if you like strategy games like this. It isn't that big of a challenge, though. You just kind of figure out what to do and run with it. Another puzzle game is Swarm of the Parasprites. This is actually very similar to a game I used to play called Bubble Spinner. You shoot Parasprites at one big ball and try to hit their matching color. Then they all fall off and you repeat the process until you clear them all. It's extremely satisfying. This is great. See, sometimes you can have the most fun with the most simple of concepts. I'm sure a game this peaceful and easy is one Fluttershy would very much appreciate. So now let's try something more complicated. Back in 2014, a series of games was started on the Hasbro website as part of the Rainbow Power Collection, named after the forms the ponies took on in Twilight's Kingdom Part 2. They all followed the same story and acted as small missions that were part of it. The first is called Magical Match 3, Twilight's Game. Discord is attacking and has taken all the color in Equestria. Now you have to play games to get it back. As you can see, this is a very complicated... Or not. It's a Match 3 game where you drag three or more matching tiles to make them disappear. You rack up points until you have enough to win. Also, Twilight gets way too excited whenever you have a match. All of these games have an easy and hard mode, but they're never too difficult. When you win, it says, Ta-da, you saved the ponies. From what, being crushed by an endless array of blocks? The other one that came out in May was Equestria Dash. This game stars the coolest pony in Equestria, and you have to reach a finish line in front of a big audience. It seems to be the biggest stadium ever because you just keep on flying until you collect all your friends by rolling into them. Once all the other ponies are copy and pasted onto the rainbow behind you, you can cross the finish line and win. It's really easy, but the concept is good. I feel like a really expanded version of this premise could really work. But after this, Giddy Up Mix Up would come out in June. This one's a lot more simple than the other two. An apple is put under one of three cups, then you follow it as they swap around and pick which one you think it's under. Also, look at how Applejack stares at you the whole time. But yeah, it's super easy. Now here's Pinkie Pie's party. She's floating up in a balloon with a bunch of other balloons floating beside her. She's asking for one or two colored balloons, depending on what mode you're playing, so you click the ones that match and hand them over. Also, your friends are just floating up there behind you. I don't think Rainbow Dash or Fluttershy need balloons tied to them in order to fly, though. It's fine, but like with Equestria Dash, could be really good with some expansion. Now here's Follow Fluttershy, which might be the most detailed of the bunch. You have to help Fluttershy lead Angel to his friends by throwing him carrots to lead him down a path while avoiding other animals. The instructions in Victory Screen also refer to Angel as a she, for what that's worth. This requires a bit of patience, and you only have a certain number of carrots, so you might need to use some good old-fashioned brain work. It really feels like this one had more put into it than the others in the Rainbow Power series. They must have really liked Fluttershy. But now we have Rarity's Dress Up. In this, you dress up your friends. Personally, I try to make them look as goofy as possible. Except Rainbow Dash, she gets to look cool. It's a standard dress-up game. There aren't too many clothing options to choose from, but at least you can dress up all five of the other ponies. So that does it for each of the main characters, but we aren't done yet. In July, they released Pony Dance Party, which takes place after you defeat Discord and restore power. By matching blocks, winning a race, catching balloons, feeding a rabbit, finding an apple, and dressing your friends up, you saved all of Equestria. Love that logic. So now we're having a dance party to celebrate. It's a rhythm game where you click the icons as they move to their respective spaces. With every note you hit, you raise what they call the prance meter, which you have to keep from going down for the whole song. Ah, uh, she's making that face again. It's pretty easy. 
Like all the other ones, I know, the world's gone mad, Lucy's calling a rhythm game easy. But believe it or not, this wasn't the final game labeled as Rainbow Power. A month later, we would get Princess Twilight Sparkle's Kingdom Celebration. How's that for a title? In this, the magic of friendship unlocked Twilight's new castle. I wish the magic of friendship could do me a few favors for a change. You have five minutes to decorate for a celebration. Uh, you think that's just a little short notice? Eh, I can do it in ten seconds flat. You have to memorize where a bunch of items go, then drag them to where they belong. This is interesting, and actually pretty challenging. If you take too long, it just outright tells you where the remaining stuff goes. My idiotic self really appreciates that. This is great to play if you want to practice your memorization skills. Ah, I see Twilight's getting overly excited again. But now that we're done with Rainbow Power, there's one more official game I'd like to check out before we look at something fan-made. This is Adventures in Ponyville, and boy does this take me back. This is a game that actually allows you to become a horse in Ponyville. That was our biggest dream back in the day. Thank you, Hasbro. We see a backstory that tells us how ponies obtain their cutie marks. Apparently we suck at it, so we're heading to Ponyville because they seem to know what they're doing over there. We then get to design our character. Personally, I'm partial to Pony Creator V3 by General Zoi. You have to unlock a lot of features by gaining points in the game. Sadly, you have to unlock being a Pegasus or Unicorn, too. Thankfully, you can change how you look at any time. Look, I tried to emulate a flannel with this scarf and saddle. I'm bringing grunge to Ponyville. Wait till they hear Mare in the box. I needed to name her something too, but Lucy isn't a very My Little Pony sounding name. I tried to do some wordplay and Loose End was the first thing that came to mind. You can't deny that literally sounds like an MLP name. We can put her with the Winx Club version of me we made before. I'm collecting these things like Pokemon cards. So when you're in Ponyville, you can walk around and talk to horses from the show. Pony up! They say the same repeated phrases, but occasionally they'll hit you with a scenario you have to give advice in. You select one of three options and fill a meter for a category depending on your answer. The categories are the elements of friendship. You have to fill them all to get your cutie mark. Sometimes it's hard to tell what answers are going to raise the meter for a certain category, so if you're trying to raise one over the others, this isn't a reliable method for doing so. Luckily, you can walk around town and find missions to play. I love the way you trot. If we visit Rainbow Dash, clouds appear, so she has to clear them. Twilight then turns us and this random girl into Pegasi. It's all I've ever wanted. You choose a difficulty, then you fly around bashing into clouds. Your friend also keeps up the rear and can hit the ones you miss. To beat the storm clouds, you have to smash them on the top. Occasionally, your friend will start to fall. If you go back and save her, you get a bunch of points for your categories. It's also really satisfying how the background gets less cloudy and less dark with every cloud you bust. This is actually a really good minigame, and it's the perfect concept for a Rainbow Dash theme. Cloud kicking is what she's all about. This is the part I went back and played the most. It was easy to do, because all the minigames from this were released on their own on the Hasbro website. So let's check out the other ones. For Pinkies, you head to Sugar Cube Corner in this cute little cutscene. Then you have to help her fill orders by matching sweets with their silhouettes on a conveyor belt. You can also just drop them, which is amusing to do. This was kind of laggy for me, so please excuse the frequent freezing. Pinky's energy is just too chaotic for this to function right. While I like the concept here, I feel like it's too easy, even on harder difficulties. I don't mind a kid's game being easy, but it feels like unless you intentionally slip up, the game will just keep going on forever. The belt does get faster over time, but it takes a while to reach that point. So let's look at Applejacks. You have to harvest apples by kicking trees so they drop them into baskets. Then you collect the baskets and bring them to a wheelbarrow. Occasionally, snips and snails will sneak in and try to steal them, so you have to scare them off. You also have to harvest the apples before they rot. You can even plant some to grow trees, but that might create more problems for you. So yeah, there's a lot to keep track of here. At the same time, it's really simple when you get the hang of it. It does get harder as it goes along, but like with the pinky one, you might have to start slacking a little for the difficulty to do you in. At the same time, you are meant to play the games consistently to farm friendship points, so in this context, maybe it's a good thing you can keep going for so long. I should also mention there's this really handy feature that allows you to teleport to a minigame's location at will. I'm really glad they decided to include that. So overall, I'm green now because that's my favorite color. I like the basic premise, but even as a kid, I was never a big fan of how long it took to grind through this. 
You really just play the same three minigames over and over and hope questions appear every so often. I do like the idea of a game where you're a pony in Equestria and you have to help all the other ponies, but I just wish they included a bit more. If Rarity, Twilight, and Fluttershy had their own games, I think it would have made a necessary difference. Even if this was one of those Flash games they frequently updated over time and added new games as they created them. Though the Pony Creator was posted separately and branded as a rarity game at one point, I just think this needed a little more to be truly spectacular. Can't say it didn't amuse me as a child, though. But this isn't the only game out there that allows us to explore Ponyville and interact with the characters. For this last part of the video, I'd like to look at a fan game instead of an official one. I think that'll be a strong note to end on for the time being. This is Explore Ponyville, which was made by a creator named Drood14. I think that's how you pronounce that. I don't know, I looked it up. This is an incredibly expansive game with so much to do in it. So let's dive back into Ponyville and see what we've got here. As we can see, this looks like a perfect recreation of the show. You can honestly fool me and tell me this was official. I'd fully believe it if it wasn't for a few... unique moments that we'll get to in a moment. Basically, Twilight just came back from Canterlot, and now you can follow one of the main ponies back to their house and hang out with them. Let's start with Rainbow Dash. Big surprise, I know. Then she just sits in bed and reads Daring Do books the whole time. Wow, such a good host. But let's listen, I could use a bedtime story. Has Daring Do trekked through the tropical jungle, the wet heat sapped her energy and slowed her every step. But her crash landing in the jungle had injured her wing and she was grounded for a few days. I love this story! I don't care about your opinions, get on with the story. If you get sick of Daring Do, you can go outside and fly around. You can even destroy clouds and get a cutscene with Pinkie Pie. And if you head over here, you can make her perform a sonic rain boom. Could there be anything more awesome? Now let's go hang out with Pinkie. Yeah, now it's a party. There's a lot to see here, but the most interesting part is when you go in the kitchen. You get to help her make cupcakes. A cup of flour! A cup of flour! A cup of flour! Okay, enough being silly. Ugh, are you kidding? Actually, you need to head to the other side of the kitchen for the ingredients. I didn't realize this at first because I thought I'd leave the stage if I clicked to leave the screen. You give her everything she asks for, then you can decorate the cupcakes to your liking. Of course I aced this stage. It's been 12 years since I last heard it, but I still remember the recipe from her cupcake song, largely thanks to this TF2 parody. Another fun place you can visit here is the counter with all these sweets on it. She eats the lollipops and puts a couple on the top. She just makes comments about the other ones. What's sad is that this is the one stage that makes you feel bad for leaving. Are you sure you don't want to stay? There's still some cake left. Darn it, Pinky. You're gonna make me stay on this level forever. Now let's head to Rarities, who has the most involved location in the entire thing. You have a few places to go on the ground floor alone, but first, let's draw with Sweetie Belle. You can draw with different crayons and listen to Sweetie Belle criticize your work. I don't even know what we're doing! Shut up, kid. I know what I'm doing. This is a blast. I'm having the time of my life here. Ugh, I'm so bored! No one asked you. Now let's see what's upstairs. We have a choice of three rooms to go in, so let's start with the right. Uh... Why am I watching a pony bathe? Oh no, oh no, no, they're not doing this, no. That's messed up. Let's get out of here. I mean, if bathing isn't enough for you, you can watch her sleep. This sure is something. But in the same room, you can play dress up with mannequins. Are my friends going to absolutely roast me for these like they did a rarity in the show? It's pretty limited, but I always advocate for dress up mini games. They're good to have. Now, if we look in this room, Jeez, why is this game so weird about Rarity? I guess this is a relic of the old fandom humor. But you can put makeup on her now. But there's even more to do on the ground floor. If you open this chest, you can mess around with the jewels inside it. I like throwing them at her. You like jewels? 
Hey, take this. But we can also visit the kitchen where our lovely sister is cooking up a disaster for us. That's as good a sign as any for me to get out of here. I'll never forgive her for what she said about my art. Now let's visit Applejack. You can control her and walk around the farm. You can't go in the barn, but you can drink cider. Is that a challenge? I just want to point out that I had a whole phase of being obsessed with apple cider all because of that one episode. Strange what the ponies can do to you, man. You can also walk around the farm, see Apple Bloom and Scootaloo playing some stupid game, then you can play this horseshoe throwing mini game. It's a little hard to get the hang of, but once you land your first one, you can just keep landing the meter in the same spot. We can also see Big Mac. Yep. And now it's on to Fluttershy. I'm the cutest thing ever. Wow, since when are you so conceited? Even though her house is supposed to be nice and peaceful, it feels so sinister in this. Like, I feel a little unsafe being here. Something just feels off about it. We also have a juice drinking simulator. Have you ever wanted to drink juice, but as a horse? Well, consider your wish granted. But the real fun is in the backyard. I'm a chicken! <laughs> Pinkie Pie, you are so random. Hey, what's that? What's that there? I don't like that. Now let's go play with the animals. Hello, little guy. I guess you were hungry. Ah. Ah. Uh, oh my. That is hilariously dark. You can go around feeding the animals, but Fluttershy's freaking me out here. Maybe we'd better go see Twilight instead. As can be expected, a lot of effort went into this location. You can watch Twilight mess around with a spellbook and... Oh no, this is bad. Darn it, I can't even visit a magic horse without something burning down. One cool feature here is the ability to write a letter to Princess Celestia, just for the chance to say you did. Spike sends it over, then Celestia writes back and insults you. Imagine if that happened in the show. We can also play this game where we put books on a shelf in alphabetical order. Ah, if only I bothered to learn the alphabet. Reminds me of the bookshelf in Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt. Are you serious? Twilight's getting overly excited about this, too? Find some pony who looks at you like Twilight does whenever she sees me complete a simple task. This story is called The Legend of the Headless Horse. Sorry, Twilight. Rainbow Dash is far better at reading than you- This is my book, and I'm gonna read it! Whoa, whoa, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Uh, go on, please continue. We can also throw these books around. This sure is fun. Now let's head to Twilight's basement. There's a lot of important stuff down here, so we can't touch anything. And that about does it for all the big stuff you can see here. Now this is an incredible fan game. If you like the show, there are few better ways to immerse yourself in its universe than by playing something like this. It captures the spirits of the early seasons and can honestly be mistaken as official. It's amazing. Fans that put this much work into a project to show their passion for something really need to be appreciated. This is a fantastic creation and displays the dedication My Little Pony fans are willing to put forward. And that's about it for the games I really wanted to go over in this video. There's still a lot of nostalgia-inducing My Little Pony content out there, so if you like seeing me talk about this, I'd be happy to cover more of it. All of these games really take me back to a time where everything seemed simple. This show will always have a special place in my heart, and it always fills me with a sense of childish joy whenever I get to revisit it. The magic of this series can brighten any pony's day. The show is about friendship, and it certainly succeeded with its message by bringing together such a strong community of like-minded people. That is truly beautiful. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.